Hey guys, just wanted to share with you, we were hugely blessed today. Uh, we got about $450 in contributions on Indiegogo. So thank you for those who contributed. It was a huge blessing and uh, here's to uh, continuing forward. Hey guys, it is the Oakland Tobacconist, and I am standing in our humidor, and it is almost done. We're starting to mount the uh, humidifiers, you can kind of see behind me. And uh, the shelves are done, we're doing the trimmings, the lights, the whole nine yards. And we are officially about just over a week until we open, so make certain you come out and visit us on August 30th. Don't miss it, because we're going to have this humidor stocked. Does that work? Yeah. It's all good? I gotta say, this is like smoking, like perfect, yeah. like beautiful. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less, of course, but it's doubly satisfying when it's like San Andreas Maduro, over year of age, Stallone cigars representing four year anniversary. It's pretty cool. I'm smoking something very special. In fact, a lot of you uh, that have been following us and uh, a lot of you that are a part of our community and family have probably seen me post about this, probably seen me talk about this, uh, and so I'm really happy to be able to share it with you. Huge shout out goes out to Tony Barrios uh, for getting this project off the ground. Uh, the, the bands, the blend, uh, the whole nine yards is just something that I'm really excited for, my wife and I are really proud of. Uh, so Tony Barrios knocked it out of the park with this particular blend. Uh, this is a San Andreas Maduro. And it has got a double binder from Esteli and Jalapa, and fillers primarily made of Lajeros inside the filler from Nicaragua. The result is a really like well-balanced Maduro cigar that's been aged over a year. There's espresso notes to it. There's there's earthy like oak as well, a little bit of leather, twinge of leather. The retro brings a little bit of a pleasant spice, but overall it's kind of like coated with a really good sweetness. It's one of those like that I, I've said before, I'm looking for that strength and that balance, both of those things together. So awesome cigar. Without further ado, I'm Eric and you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. So if you've seen some of our social media before, if you've seen uh, the videos we've put out, uh, there's a focal point, uh, hopefully it translates well, and that is community. And that is the passion of cigars, why cigars bring people together, why it brings all of us here together today. Um, and there's that sense of community and understanding. While a lot of us have our own opinions on what cigars we love and some we don't love, uh, that's a big part of it, is smoking those together. We've had great cigars uh, here at this lounge uh, and great times on YouTube Lives, on Instagram Lives, We've had some cigars, maybe not so great, uh, but that's part of the journey. Having that palette journey uh, is, runs sort of parallel lines with the shop here itself. So my wife and I, uh, Mallory, we started this shop. We got our official license, in fact, it was back in May of 2019. 
and we open at this location. We're sitting in this old 1913 train car, and it was sort of like just like on a prayer and just trying to make it happen. We got our license by May, and we opened the doors. August 30th, the official opening of 2019. But no one could have known the craziness of the coming year that, that everyone had in front of them. Looking back, you probably think like, if I knew what was gonna happen going into it, I probably wouldn't have started the business. Oakland Tobacconist wouldn't have started in 2019. Um, so that's probably a good thing we didn't know. Cause you know, we're, we're into it and we hit our first fall and we, we meet amazing people. In fact, we had an Indiegogo campaign and there was one of our like biggest contributions. In fact, it probably, I think was our biggest contribution came from a gentleman in Beaumont named Curtis Bailey. And at the time, didn't know who he was and said, hey, that was really cool. And we kind of did this like soft opening. If you, if you did a big contribution, there were certain tiers and uh, the one with the higher contributions, soft opening, you come to the shop, you get a free lighter, pick out any cigar in the humidor and we smoke together. And uh, it was a very small attendance. In fact, there was three of us in total. And I definitely thought after smoking, like, yeah, he's probably not gonna come back. This is probably just like, seems like a piece together for operation. And it basically was to see that grow. People like Steve, I remember first time he showed up, uh, we were trying to lift an entire tent. At the time, it was a, a, a temporary tent uh, in the middle of the snow and there's wires hanging down. And I also thought, oh, he's never coming back. And so many other people, and I, I yeah, I have to apologize not giving so many shout outs because I'm not meaning or intending to miss anyone. From there, then we hit March of 2020, COVID hits, and then everything shuts down. And we, at the time, are not online, and we have a brick and mortar shop that we're trying to make work when we're not allowed to keep business open. We shut down. And we, I was working another job at the time. In fact, we were open Friday through Sunday and I was working Tuesday through Thursday at my second job. And I have to pick up an extra day at my other job and we're just doing curbside pickup. And what we would do at that time is we only had Instagram Live really. And a lot of us were meeting for virtual herfs who are into cigars. Every week we would feature a particular brand and we would put together a sampler pack and we would say like message us on Instagram or give us a call or text. And for a pickup, we'll have that available that weekend. A lot of our awesome customers kind of got us through that way. Um, we would feature foundation, have a five pack of foundation. We'd feature AJ Fernandez, do a five pack of that. And that same time during that week, we would do an Instagram live with the blender or the rep or someone to connect to the brand. Cause that's always been a big focus. We, we, we pushed through, we're able to open, I believe it was right before Father's Day. So then we get into July and then the apple fire starts. And I'm sitting outside in the back patio area with Brian Silva and uh, for one of the first times he had come up to actually smoke and stay and hang out and he had said, hey, there's a fire down in Beaumont. And I was like, yeah, well, there's a lot of fires we've lived through a lot. But a little did I know the ordeal of shutting down Oakland for I believe two or so weeks, burning all the way up to Wilshire's uh, and trying to push forward through that. And that was a crazy time because my family and I were living in Oakland as well. So you have the threat of the shop and then you have the threat of your house. Meanwhile, still going to work, staying by your phone, saying, hey, call me if, if anything happens with the fire, if it's getting more intense. And then we move past that. And so we get a little bit of breathing time and we get into the fall and usually fall is the busy time in Oakland. So, you know, you can recoup some losses. You can kind of move forward on that. And then El Dorado fire happens. El Dorado fire now is on the other side of Oakland. All the other areas that, didn't, that did not burn up here. And so it's traveling to meet up in the middle. And I distinctly remember being evacuated for the second time. And we drive down and we're staying down in Banning with my brother. Kind of get all settled there. We go to sleep and I get a call at four in the morning. Devin Riley, who owns the property of Wilshire, is also a great friend of mine, cousin to my wife. And he says, you need to head up here to Oakland right now. It's four in the morning because it's all going to go. It's all gonna burn up. During the course of the night, it had jumped from the uh, north side of Oakland back to where the shop is, and it was creeping around the entire property edge. And so we drive up there, we first check on Oz, make certain that he's good. He thankfully is at a lower place, so he's not in any danger. And then we drive up to the shop, and it's, you could see the flames from there. Drive up to the house we lived in, you could see the flames from there. We had people uh, at, for, at Los Rios, we had people at uh, our neighborhood keeping watch and trying to put out spot fires from actually getting to it. A big thank you to all of our firefighters, God's providence, brought us through it and actually stopped the line and both the shop and our house were spared. And so this is sort of the roller coaster. And so most companies that start up, you always think, okay, 
So we have a year under our belt. Now we're into year number two. How do you really compare a previous year of COVID, two fires, all this tumultuous like territory we've got to wade through? So it's like, all right, well, we made it through. That's all we're going to focus on. We made it through the first year. We were able to finally pull back on my second job and kind of push forward on Oakland Tobacconist. So then we opened up uh, Thursdays and we were Thursday through Sunday. And I was able to kind of dedicate that time. That kind of went on for a while, working two other days down the hill. And then we went to five days. And then we were able to go full time and now eventually work up to six days. Who knows if seven days is, is on the horizon, but it is a really awesome journey to come from there and then move into a full time with Oakland Tobacconist. So getting through that first year, moving to more of like a permanent basis, uh, there's always that question in the back of your mind, like who's gonna wanna come up to the mountains and smoke cigars? When it's, I mean, we're in the elements, we've seen bears, we've seen coyotes, deer, uh, we've had snow, we've had mudslides, we've had fires. Um, but honestly, I think what really comes back to the reason people enjoy it so much uh, is the same reason that I can't take credit for, and that is the community that we have. So coming into the following years, uh, we end up launching the OGT Cigar Society. And this was a concept to put a spotlight and a focus on some of the manufacturers and the talents and the cigars that they could come up with. And a lot of it limited runs, uh, as well as cigars you're probably not gonna find elsewhere, um, but also an exclusivity aspect to it for the fact that it's not outside of the society. We launch it in early May, and we have about like 12 people join. Uh, and it's all, of, it's all of our community here at the shop. Um, and so we smoke it all together, we meet up, we compare notes, we vote on it. And from there it was, okay, if how do we kind of raise the bar each month? And whether it's starting off really small as we did, but kind of stair step it through. And so we had some really good cigars like the Grimalkin, the Crook of the Crown from Stolen Throne, which has always been a favorite. And then kind of working through that, there's a company I come across on Instagram, social media, called Shafio Cigars. And I had kind of seen them posted a little bit and their, their label is awesome because they have these like three different like skulls. And I learned to see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. And so I just kind of blindly reach out to them and say, hey, I really like your stuff. I'm interested in trying your blends. Uh, I mean, it looks great. I've never actually smoked them. So he sends them over, and I really, really enjoy and fall in love with the Cameroon. And so that was kind of the first introduction. A glowing review, like everyone absolutely loves it. We get introduced to Cigar Clowns. Cigar Clowns have a cigar called AVB, and it's a picture of a pumpkin head and a rider, kind of like the whole Ichabod Crane Headless Horseman thing. And that's during the fall, and I, I text them as well. Same exact thing, and I said, hey, can you send me samples? Contact that I get is a guy named Ray, and Ray says, yeah, I can send you samples. We normally don't sample out, but I can guarantee you, you're gonna love it. And of course, I'm like, well, that's what everyone's supposed to say. So he sends over the samples, and I'm about maybe an inch in, and I said, okay, this is the cigar. This is what I want. And I remember smoking it at night, and people were like, what are you smoking? I'm like, something really special. And hopefully it'll be coming next month for the membership. And sure enough, AVB gets sent out, insanely glowing reviews. That kind of launched our this really like important relationships in the very early stage. Soon after I, I talked to Tony and he says he's got blends from originally before launching Stallone cigars that have been aging in his vaults that are custom sizes. They have over seven years of age. And of course I tell him, hey, what do you have? Please send them over. And so we're gonna do a two month highlight. And these are some of the things that really like start shifting that like awareness of, oh, what is the society? We kind of just snowballed effect with, with our uh, working on new blends with the clowns. And I remembered that Cameroon from Shafio and I contacted him and said, I, ha I remember you had a San Andreas Maduro. Could you send that over one more time so I can like revisit it? And so I was smoking it and I was like, I really like it. I like the, I like the tobacco, I like the wrapper but I feel like it's maybe just a touch airier than I would like it. And so I'm in my backyard barbecuing. I say, what if we do this in a Lonsdale? I'm a, I'm a sucker for box press. Let's make it a smaller ring gauge. So 46, 48, six and a half. And he's like, hey, that sounds great. I would like to try it. Let's go ahead and do it. Lo and behold, later that year it gets voted on and it becomes the number one cigar of the year for Oakland Tobacconist. 2022. I mean, it was my number one vote. Uh, I think it just, it exemplifies so many things I love about this industry, the journey of that cigar and starting off on this like kind of like smaller side of, Hey, let's see if we can make this happen to 
it being voted on is everyone's favorite. I'll be one of the first to admit, like the cigars in our humidor are ones that I absolutely love. They're by people and companies that I admire, I respect, and I think a lot of the talent, it's like a microscope uh, zoomed in on the talent within our industry. Not only are the volumes spoken by the way that people enjoy them or talk about them or get excited when new products come out, but it really comes down to that like talent and enjoyment. Those types of journeys are what make these so special. Speaking of cigars, Anniversario from Stallone Cigars, this is something that really marks the progression of our shop. Blends of this caliber are normally something that you have to do not on a short run, but a huge run. Like to be able to get this as a private label is an endless bounty of cigars. Your minimum is so high. And so that really speaks to uh, Tony's friendship uh, and forming those relationships so that this is a very special blend he comes up with and shares with us and just makes it that much special. And for all the people that, you know, were beginning year members or jumped on when they first heard about it and said, yeah, I'll give it a try and are still members. That part of the community, the community that stuck with us through the fires, through COVID, from starting off in a small little humidor with with a foot gap of nothing between boxes because we were such on a small scale. Friends of ours like that are why we're here today. Four years of Oakland Tobacconist. We've grown with our relationships with our blenders. We've grown with our community of the society, our community here at the shop, and all are extremely special to me. And now we get to sit, enjoy cigars, enjoy pairings, and really reflect and look back on that journey of four years. And I mean, this is four years, it's not our biggest one yet of hitting five year mark, or 10 year mark, or 20 year mark, but I really look forward to the upcoming projects and the upcoming cigars that we get to share with all of you and the conversations that come with that. Because after all, that community that I talk about, when we light up that cigar, when we toast the foot, when we retrohale the cigar, when some people don't retro, which you're making a mistake if you don't, but you should. Either way, if you retro, you don't retro. When you're tasting that cigar, it evokes conversations, it evokes moments that are memories, and it exemplifies why we're here at as a shop, because the main purpose here is all of you. For Oakland Tobacconist, it's where conversation lights up. Oh,